Badger fans, I'm excited about this one. Let's talk about one of the cornerstones of the 25 class from a parent's perspective, the journey to Madison, his game, and what has led to so much success in his high school his career up to this point. All that and more in today's Locked On Badgers. Let's go. You are Locked On Badgers, your daily podcast on the Wisconsin Badgers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is going on, Badger fans? Welcome to Locked On Badgers, your team every single day. I'm your host, Ryan Herrings. Thank you so, so much for tuning in. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. This summer, FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a boost or bonus daily. Something for everyone every day, all summer long. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. And without further ado, let's bring on Nicole Powell, uh, mother of Logan Powell, four-star offensive lineman committed to the Wisconsin Badgers out of Phoenix, Arizona. Nicole, thank you so much for joining us. I want to start here. When in Logan's journey did you kind of realize, like, hey, this, this he could be a really special athlete? Um, I would say, to be honest, um, he's always been a big kid. Um, and playing youth ball, and he, my husband and I encouraged them to play all sports. But football, we just saw it click. But I think the turning moment, like, oh, he might be able to, you might be playing on Saturdays was freshman year um, when he got his Michigan offer. I was like, oh boy, like Michigan first offer. Yeah. So right then and there, we kind of thought this might be in his future. What was that like getting that Michigan offer? Did it surprise you? Because usually kids start off with like a low, like a ball state off. No disrespect to ball state. No, right. So, um, well, I was really excited about it. My dad went to Michigan. I'm from Michigan. Um, so that was kind of special in more ways than one to our family. Um, but yeah, having a big 10 big school offer, um, they hadn't won the national championship yet, but, um, still, yeah, it was a big deal. It was a big deal. How did he react to that? I think he was, he was super excited about it, but it was the one time that I was like, he kind of got quiet. Like, is this really for real? Like, is this, you know, and that's kind of how offers go, right? You're like mm -hmm. getting an offer freshman year. Is this going to be committable down the road? Having gone through it with an older son, I kind of knew that I was excited about it. Um, <clears throat> But, and my older son did not, I don't think he had a big 10 offer, um, but it doesn't matter. But, but we kind of knew like, yeah, this is a big offer, but not to not get too excited about it, but we know, we realistically know how this works. So. Well, and let's talk about that. So your older son, oldest son is in University of Arizona. He's a, um, and then your youngest son is also a player that's starting to generate some, some buzz and some some excitement there. Uh, what lessons did you take from your oldest son, his recruitment, his journey to Arizona that maybe helped with uh, Logan? Well, and, and that's kind of leading into what I was um, saying about the Michigan offer. We, this football, my husband's a baseball coach. Um, this was not in our wheelhouse. Um, <clears throat> and he's a pro coach. So he's not even on the college side. So we learned a lot along with Tyler, my oldest, kind of going through that recruiting process. Um, and you kind of understand like relationships matter, but more so sometimes than even the offer itself, you know, that can make or break. If you're, if you're deciding between two schools or three schools, what's my strongest relationship? Um, so, and we didn't know that we in, until going through that process with my oldest. So we kind of took that like, okay, this is great. This Michigan offer being a first one, that's a big deal. However, let's see how that relationship develops. So I would say we learned a lot, good and bad, that um, we're very realistic people when it comes to you know, I'd rather have somebody tell me straight up than me trying to guess or not ask questions because I don't want to know the answer. 
Um, so we're very much like that. I'm very curious. I'm a question asker. So, um, I think I did that even more so in Logan's recruiting than I did with my older son. Cause I knew the questions to ask. Um, so I think it helped us tremendously, tremendously. How, com how competitive are the three of them? Like growing up in the under the same house. Everything is a competition. Everything, everything. Wrestling, who can run up the stairs? Like it's, you name it, it's a competition. I gotta think like there's there's a value in that, right? Growing up in that competitive environment. Absolutely, absolutely, <clears throat> and kind of letting them figure it out. Like right. you got to figure out the pecking order per se. But now that my son's been gone, Logan has kind of we've seen Logan come into that role of big brother. Now when big brother's home. He kind of falls back into, okay, big brother's home. And there's just, it's awesome. It's awesome to see because when they were younger and, you know, you know, four, seven, 10, it's like fighting. And it's just, you're like, oh my gosh, this is how it's always going to be. And to see them kind of grow into their roles and be best friends with each other. It's, it's pretty awesome. How much furniture did you have to replace? Um, <laughs> more beds than anything. More bed frames. Um, just, I would say, enough. <laughs> awesome. Enough. It was all worth it. It was all worth it, for sure. Well, let, let's shift into this then. Let, and you mentioned something I wanted to get into. You knew some of the questions you wanted to ask a little bit more the second time around. Let's talk about that journey to Wisconsin. Let's talk about that recruitment. I want to start here, though. How do you feel when people say Logan Powell, Wisconsin Badgers football commit? Oh, I love it. Especially after visiting Madison, I think it is a phenomenal fit. Because I had never been, even being from Michigan, um, <clears throat> and I went to Eastern Michigan for two years before I transferred to Arizona State. So, um, you know, it wasn't like I would moved when we were younger. I mean, I spent some of my adult college years in Michigan and I had never been to Wisconsin. Well, Milwaukee, but never Madison. And so I was anxious to check it out too. And I feel like as soon as I got there, I was like, oh yeah, I, I can see him here. I can see him. Here. What, what was the so first I'm connection? Like? I'm excited about it. Oh, I love it. What was the first connection? Like the first time Wisconsin reached out, communicated with you, communicate with Logan. Uh, what was that initial process like? Um, it was great. It was coach Blazik and he's great. His energy, he brings the energy. He's a very, um, he's a very big personality and you can tell he is passionate about what he does and he, ex his expectation is high and for, for that room, but yet he has a way about him, which I think all great coaches do of loving them up when they need to be loved up, but let's take care of business when we're on that football field. And I feel like he's a great balance of that. What, you, what could about feel it. you could just feel it. You, you could feel it. Today's episode is also brought to you by our great friends over at eBay motors. Listen, your car is there for you through a lot, right? It's been there with me on my late night trips to the Quickie Mart, over to Camp Randall, wherever I'm going to go. My first car, I named her April because I wanted something I could, you know, it felt like an April car. I had a connection to it. Then I got carjacked in that car. Issues. Anyway, eBay Motors is here for you. If I had eBay Motors at that point, I could have fixed up April, my ride or die. I could have kept her alive with all the great parts over at eBay Motors, floor mats, pieces for the tires I had lost. The people who carjacked my car ripped it all to pieces. It was a disaster. With eBay Motors, I could have got all the parts to make April whole again. And unfortunately, I had to let her go because I did not have eBay Motors. I could not fix my carjacked car. I could not keep my ride or die alive. If you want to fix up your car with whatever part you need, go over to eBay Motors, the right parts, the right fit, the right prices. eBay Guaranteed Fit is only available to U.S. customers. Keep your ride or die alive over at eBay Motors. Well, we've heard that about Coach Blazik from a bunch of people at this point. So now you're just confirming the narrative, yeah. um, which is awesome. What about Brady Collins? I know that somebody, every offensive line person I talk to says Brady I mean, Collins is incredible. And that is, so that is one of the things 
I learned in my older son's recruitment. And my older son, when Logan was going through this process, hit this home. He was like, Logan, probably even more so than your position coach, you need to build a relationship with the strength and conditioning coach. And I never really understood what that meant until Tyler came home after that first season and was telling us like that's, they give the coaches a break before the season and you're all day, every day with the strength and conditioning coach. And, and then obviously he's there through the season. So you're spending a lot of time with them. You have to connect um, and, you know, buy into what they're doing with the program. It, that's an important relationship. And so kind of Tyler kind of guided us through that. And I was like, oh, okay, that makes sense. Something that as a parent, I don't think you would necessarily know. You might be told that, but unless you see it, like live it, you know, through Tyler. Um, so that was important to Logan. Um, you know, he, I think, really looked at that aspect of the program for sure. So his energy, I've never seen anything like it, actually. <laughs> I've never seen anything like it. It's great. It's great. Also, wants to take care of business, but you can tell he wants to have fun with it and he wants it to be a team. He wants it. He wants a buy-in. Um, and he's also going to expect a lot, but you're going to get a lot from him too. Can you give us an example of that? When you say like, I've never seen energy like that or like, what is, what is it a presentation he gives or is it just a, a back no, and forth? It's zero presentation. I think it is a genuine, just like coach Blazek. I never felt like I was getting a sales pitch. Um, <clears throat> and, um, and I've seen some of those, right? Um, it was not a sales pitch. It was a genuine, this is who he is. And we walked into his office and he was like, woo, like, tell me, like, like he had, um, I think it was like Superman over here and some, some um, posters like Karate Kid, Cobra Kai from my childhood. So we started talking about that. He's just, He's, he's about getting to know the player as a whole, not just what you're going to do in the weight room and, and during football. He really wants to know, like, what kind of music do you like? Let's do your playlist today. Like, that's a genuine guy that is not all about, it's not just about him. It's about, you know, these players. So um, just, just his aura, his energy was really awesome. Well, and you've someone you mentioned it. You've seen other staffs, other programs, other strength conditioning coordinators. Um, and I would never ask for names or, or particulars, yeah. but it sounds like that's not always a consistent thing at other schools. Mm -mm. Or like the strength and conditioning coach has been there so long that he's kind of like, mm, like, oh, here's another recruit coming through. Or you have somebody that's fairly new um, that isn't a part of that staff or wasn't a part of the staff and they're coming on. Um, you know, so it, it's just, it's just like anything. It's just, it's a different personality and you just got to find, you, you got to hope that there's a fit with not only your room, but your position coach and then the strength coach. And I think that when you're talking about Wisconsin as a whole, I think that's the whole package for, at least for Logan, he was like, obviously had a longer relationship with coach Blazek. Um, then got to meet with coach fickle for a couple times and then Brady Collins, it was like the perfect storm. And I think, like I said, I think it's just, it's a great fit. Let me ask you this from, you mentioned you had several questions you kind of knew to ask. I'm guessing one of them was the strength and conditioning part. Was there another question that you're like, I have to get this answer. And then maybe what was that? And what was oh, yeah. the and like, if any other of the coaches are watching this, they're going to know. Um, because they were like, Oh, you just come right out with it. Um, one of the first things when meeting with the position coach that I would ask is where is he on your board and where is he at on your board? That's the million dollar question because why are we here? You mm -hmm. know what I mean? So, <clears throat> you know, so that's it. 
<laughs> and, and obviously the answer was very high. Yes, yes. In that situation, it was. And in other schools, it was too. Um, but I think it's an important question to ask because, you know, this is a life decision, four years, five years um, of your life. It's like, I want to know if we're making you a priority, I want to know if we're a priority. Mm -hmm. You know, I think we're going to be a good fit, but do you think we're going to be a good fit? You know, it's got to be like a marriage. It's like dating. I've told other parents, it's like dating. You got to ask some tough questions. It's like speed dating. I'll I'll, tell you, I'll roll it back. It's like speed dating. You better ask the questions that you want the answers to right out the bat because you can't give them an opportunity to come up with something else like a spiel. Like, mm -hmm. so that's why I always ask that right off the bat because a couple of them were caught off guard, which also says something. And then a couple, you know, several schools were like, okay, this is where he is on the board. Um, and, and so I think it's an important question to ask. Yeah. I love that perspective. Um, cause you, you do need the truth and you don't have a ton of time. And I want to get into that because mm -hmm. Logan had a ton of offers, right? Elite mm -hmm. schools, Bama, Oregon, mm -hmm. Oklahoma. I could go on and on Texas A&M on mm -hmm. and on and on. Mm -hmm. How do you even get to the point of narrowing that list down to five or six to start to then get into those speed dating moments. That was tough. That was tough. Um, that was tough. So Logan and I, um, and we talked a little bit before, um, before the show started about how did you get to the point where you narrowed down the schools and, um, did I help him with that? Absolutely. My husband and I did. Um, because when you're getting calls, you kind of got to make a pro and con list. Can you see yourself living here? Especially Logan and I took quite a few unofficials for that reason. Cause I'm like, realistically, you can maybe do four, five would be tough to do officials. It would just, it would be tough. So we made it a point, okay, let's go to some schools that you've never been. Let's make a list of those schools. And where do you think that you would want to see so we can determine if you want to take an official there? Um, and I'm just going to give an example. Alabama was one of those schools mm -hmm. and, and Michigan was not. And people were like, well, why aren't you going to Michigan? Well, because we've been to Michigan outside of his offer at least five times. So he knows what he's getting there. We've never been to Tuscaloosa. So mm -hmm. let's go to Tuscaloosa. And my older son had a teammate that was at Alabama, had a house in Elk right down the street from the stadium. He's like, you know, I'm still here. I know you're not going to stay with me, but I can show you around, whatever. So I'm like, okay, let's take advantage of that. So we did. Um, <clears throat> so I think making a list and prioritizing things that are important. Do you want to check out this area? You've never been to that area of the South. Tennessee was another one. We've never been to those schools um, um, or that state. So that's what we did. But I think there was a lot of lists that I helped him not do. I didn't write the list. He wrote the list, but it was kind of like, let's think out loud here. What do you like about this? Is there something that you don't like or that you've heard? Make a list. And it's well, just kind of walking through. It is also brought to you by our great friends over at FanDuel. FanDuel remains the number one source for all your sports betting needs, all your sports betting information. Major League Baseball is in full swing right now. I love baseball. I love sports. FanDuel is where I go. Official sports book of Major League Baseball, the official sports book of the Locked On Network for a reason. Fast, easy, simple. It is a great time to get started with FanDuel Plus with football right around the corner. There's futures bets for college football, pro football, whatever you would like. It's over there at FanDuel.com. Again, please do it responsibly, but a great way to spice up your sports weekend, a great way to spice up your sports nights, have some fun with futures, parlays, teasers, spreads. In the easiest user interface you're ever going to find over at FanDuel.com slash LockedOn. FanDuel.com slash LockedOn, the number one spot for all your sports betting needs, FanDuel is the official sports betting partner of the Major League Baseball, of Major League Baseball, and of the Locked On Podcast Network. Head over there today, vandal.com.
Yeah, and I want to expand on that because I think every every family and every parent and every recruit is different. But mm-hmm. for for your situation and, and Logan and yourself and your and um, your husband, how do you maybe insulate the recruit from all the social media? Is there anything you do in terms of too much communication or that person just honestly feels like a bad seed? You know what? It started to be to be honest. Um, it started to get overwhelming for Logan. Um, I would say probably starting the beginning of junior year where he was just getting inundated. And I, ha- we, we, every Sunday I would be like, okay, let's clean this up a little bit. You have to get back to these people and this is a good experience, but, but you can't just, you can't just ignore. And I don't think that's what he was doing. Um, but he was, he didn't know how he didn't know how to, you can't set up three calls back to back to back. You'll be exhausted. Your brain, you, you know, you're, you're 16 years old. Um, mm-hmm. So I kind of helped him navigate that in a way like, okay, every Sunday we're going to kind of prioritize, prioritize. Who do you need to get back to? Do you want to set up a call with him or do you want to say, maybe let's talk on this day. So I had to walk him through a lot of that. I would say the biggest thing to his benefit is he's not a big social media guy. So he's not, he's not into, which I find most O-linemen aren't, he's not into like the hype and like, I want to, he's just not that guy. Um, So that helped. So he wasn't online constantly reading all this stuff. That's just not him. So that helped. But it was managing, you know, not only the coaches, but like kind of weeding out like this is a recruiting analyst. Like, let's just put that on the back burner, get back to who you need to get back to. So it is it's definitely managing that for helping him manage that. What um, the official visit to Wisconsin, what set that apart? Because you mentioned Brady Collins, you mentioned Blazek. Maybe what else on that official visit set that apart from other places you guys have been? For for Logan mm-hmm. or for me? Or, or for, more for you, actually, because I've, I've talked to Logan. So actually more from your okay. perspective. You know, okay. your so I just felt like there was a – um. well, Madison's gorgeous. It's beautiful. It's a great college town, great vibe. Um. And me being from the Midwest, I kind of knew, like, it's Midwest. Like, I enjoy the Midwest. So from that perspective, I kind of, that's why I asked about me or Logan, because I already kind of had this preconceived notion of how the people were going to be. Um, But I would say it was an overall feeling of genuineness. I would I would say that would be the the word of the weekend, um, authentic. I feel like what they were saying, they believed in and what they were saying is how they genuinely felt. I didn't feel like we were ever getting a sales pitch. I didn't ever feel like when we talked on the phone, when we were in person, it was any different. In fact, I felt like it was better. So that was my gut feeling. Now there wasn't a lot of time that I had with Logan. So when he told me that he wanted to commit, we were in a meeting room and I was so taken back. I was like, what? I said, what out loud? And these parents turned around, like looked at me. I'm like, oh no, I'm good. I'm good. And I'm like, what do you mean? What do you, what? So, and even after that, I didn't really have a chance to talk to him. So yeah, I just, I just got, and, and obviously in that moment, after we chatted, I was like, oh, he's feeling exactly what I'm feeling. So. Were, were any of those other parents, other parents of recruits on visits? Were you in yes, the group of them? Yes. No, we were in like a, we were in a, uh, we were in the team meeting room. And I can't remember, they were doing a presentation on just like the campus and just talking about the campus. And then there was a, they were player, they were doing a player panel at the end. Um, we were, they were letting the recruits ask the current players questions and, and there was a break and I looked over at Logan and he's like, I'm going to come in here. And I was like, what? Like, what? <laughs> so I was like, okay. 
So in that moment, I think I knew I was like, did you just say you want to commit here? And I'm like, okay, like I can see it. There was no question in my mind. I'm like, if this is what you want to do, then we have your back. Who else in the 25 class in terms of families have you either gotten to know on the official visit or you had great interactions with? I know that 25 class is kind of a bond. Yes, uh, big time. Um, Roskies, um, Davenport's, Posa's. um, Forgive me, and I'm horrible with names. Um, Linebacker. Uh, Let's see, Ains? No. Brandon Ains. I think he's, he's from Wisconsin. Uh, Catalano? Yes, Catalano. Yep. They were on our visit, um, Posa Davenport, Roskies. And then I had a conversation with Amy Hayward, Kevin Hayward's mom, before we went on the visit. Um, they had very parallel recruitments. I feel like uh, Kevin and Logan. Um, So that was a great conversation. I've kept in touch with Amy. Um, It just feels like, you know, I'm going to compare it to my older sons. I love the parents on Arizona, um, especially the ones that stayed. The majority of the team Mm -hmm. stayed. And so the majority of the parents stayed. Um, And it's, it's so important. It's, it's more important. I think than people think to have that, good group of parents that are all kind of connected. Cause you are, you're connected, you know, by that team, your son, and you're going to spend a lot of time with these people traveling. Um, and so I think it's important to have a good support group because, you know, it, it makes things a lot easier. That's for sure. No, I love it. And I could keep you, I feel like I could talk this recruiting journey with you for an hour, but I, I don't, I'm not going to be too long. No, I do have some questions. No, um, people had some questions. Yeah. Uh, the first one here is, um, was there any push pull to stay close to home? Like those local schools, Absolutely. obviously your older brother would have been in Arizona. How Absolutely. did that go? I think it was more, yes, he was getting a lot from Arizona. Um, more ASU, big time ASU. Um, I would say Arizona. Yes. From his brother. And yes, he did an offer there, but the staff was brand new. Um, So the old staff that was recruiting Logan was no longer there. Um, So we go back to relationships. I think there just wasn't a longstanding enough relationship. But yes, there was a big push for both of those schools. What was the local reaction when, I mean, Logan, listen, Wisconsin has an incredible reputation for developing offense alignment, but mm-hmm. Logan is still a national level recruit from Phoenix picking Madison. Was there a local reaction that was kind of like, wow, oh, that's interesting? Yes. Um, but I don't know how much of it, if this makes sense, was in the media. Mm. I don't, I don't know how much of it, I think there was a lot of fan perspective on like message boards that some people had sent me, um, you know, about keeping, um, in state talent in state. Um, but outside of that, I don't think a lot of it was on social media. So, so. how do you, re- how do you react as a parent when you see social media comments, um, about your son or you see recruiting rankings like how do you manage that i don't even listen i don't think and me being mom i'm not again i'm kind of new to this um but i don't i don't really pay attention at all to that um it's noise and so it's not affecting me you know I, I don't really pay attention to it. Are right, you ready for a couple rapid fire questions? Yeah. Um, hidden talent, Logan Powell, not athletic related. Oh gosh. Hidden talent. Lego building. He can oh, I build love that. Lego. He built this Wolverine arm. I swear in under an hour. I'm like, you're already done with that? It was like, you know, the whole Wolverine arm. 
Yeah. That's awesome. I love that. Best mm -hmm. out of your, your three sons, best cook. Logan. Let's go. Um, mm -hmm. What's it in, in four years? What do you, what do you hope he will have accomplished in Wisconsin, in Madison? I hope he builds good friendships and a base and it continues to be his home because I think that's important. I think you, it should be your home away from home. You know, you're, we're probably always going to be in Arizona. Both of our parents, both my husband and I's parents have retired here. Um, but I want to see him successful on and off that football field and um, have it be his home away from home. Message for Badger fans. What kind of kid are they getting with Logan Powell? Oh, he is going to bring – he has the ability to be – pick um, – he has the ability to be friends with literally anyone. Um, and it's in a genuine way. And I feel like that team is already – that class of 2025 is already kind of super connected. And I feel like – He's going to do his part to keep that. And I think when you have that, that connection, that's what wins championships. You don't win championships putting a bunch of five-star players on an all-star team. You win as a team because you go through good, bad, and different as a team. And I feel like there's big things going to happen with this, the, with this class, for sure. And I'm excited. Cool. I'm excited about it. Absolutely love it. Uh, Nicole Powell, mother of Logan Powell, obviously a big part of that 24 class joining us. Nicole, thank you so, so much You're for your time. Welcome. I really do appreciate it. Love it so much. On Wisconsin, we will talk tomorrow. Uh, thank you again to Nicole. You can follow her. Our Twitter account's down there. And we'll definitely be cheering along with Logan Powell for his senior year on Wisconsin. And we will talk tomorrow.